the essence and the power of the Arata method is we want everybody in the organization to be self-reliant. We want to develop everybody in the company to be full. We want to make sure this is a knowledge company, a growing company. We want everybody to be trusted. You can't trust people unless they have the knowledge and the skill. How are they going to get the knowledge and the skill? Not a vacuum. You've got to train them every day. You've got to push them every day. You've got to challenge them every day. They should have homework. Why should we have homework just in college, in school? I mean, it's crazy. You, you know what I mean? You go through 12 years, 16, 18 years of school. You're doing your homework. At least you should be doing your homework. And then you go to work and there's no homework. Why do we stop learning? Why do we have a sign in front of our factory that says, leave your brains outside? <laughs> you leave it here in this box, we'll give it back to you when you, go, when you go home at the end of the day. We have to stop that nonsense. So this is a little test that I want you to take. I want you to take this one sheet of paper, and on it I'd like you to evaluate yourself in relationship, how self-reliant are you? And put a one to 10 in each, after each word. Give yourself a number from one to 10. You rate yourself. I want you to rate yourself. How capable, how brave are you? How confident? These words represent you are self-reliant. This is the problem that we have in our company. That's why we quality record people, because we don't trust them. We have to watch them. If they were fully self-reliant, then we wouldn't have to quality record them. If they make a mistake, we would talk about that mistake to try to correct it and to move forward. We'd let people meet at the end of every day to discuss the problems that, that, that occurred during the day so they could solve it and not repeat it the next day. This is a wonderful little test that I'd like you to take on your own, go down on your own, and give yourself a score from one to 10. Then I'd like you to go back and take 10 of them. You don't have to do that now but I'd like you to go back and take 10 of them and see what you're gonna do in your life to move it up to 10. This is brand new from Toyota. Toyota now has a manager of self-reliance. See, because Toyota ran into trouble a couple of years ago with the brakes, they got such bad publicity, they lost billions of dollars because of the trouble, and they said, we have to get more self-reliant. So they now have a self-reliance vision. This comes from Toyota, this is one of their slides. There's a woman in Georgetown now in charge of trying to get them self-reliant. To them, it means the following. You see, prior to this, any major problem, they had to check with Nagoya in Japan to solve the problem. All big decisions had to go to Japan. Well, Toyota says we can't live that way in the world. We're a global company. They have to be self-reliant in each area. So this is a giant step. Each little, each little department in each plant now has to become self-reliant to make more of the decisions. I believe we gotta take it down to the lowest level, which is everybody in the company has to become self-reliant so we can trust them. We want everybody to be a world champion. We want everybody to be the best you. The best you, what they go through, it's amazing. I was watching television in Japan and they were showing the Olympic tryouts for the swim team. And I'm watching their body. Did you see 60 Minutes on Sunday? Did you see the interview of Phillips? Did you see her, his body? Wasn't it beautiful? Did you notice what that man did? Maybe it took him 10 years to get that body. But that's what you got to do. you got to get a strong goal. And once the strong goal is deep enough, you'll do anything to attain your goal. And it's amazing what you can attain in life if you do this. A self-directing person is open-minded about criticism. It's like an empty glass. Harada teaches this very powerful thing, is look at yourself as an empty glass of water that is open to be full. That's your job. Just look at yourself as an empty glass of water ready to be filled. Let's go on. I want you to all to learn this wonderful concept called the Harada Method. We have some tools. I've shared this with you. These are the tools Harada came up with. Um, he has a basic philosophy of what all this is about, and you'll notice we have the 33 words on it. Then we have what's called the goal setting sheet. And the goal setting sheet is very simply the following. You have to pick a goal. That's the first thing. If we can put measures on the goal, it's even better. 
If you can put measures, it's even better because you have to know where you're going and then you have to know, am I getting there? And in order for you to know if you're getting there, you need some kind of measures. So this is analogy and it comes from sports. And I want to throw the shot put, right? Well, I know the record is 60 meters for the shot put. So I have a measure. If I want to be better, I have to have 60.5 meters as my goal. Now, in order to get there, I will take interim steps. I'll take an interim step and say, well, uh, the highest goal will be 60.5, but I'll put 57 as my interim. And then I'll say, well, what, what, am I, what am I really capable of doing within the next six months? And I'll set a third goal. And then what's my current capacity? Well, now I can do, you know, I can do 50 meters. I know I can at least do 50 meters. And then I'll put down the dates. I need a date. If you're an athlete, you know the, the event is going to be on January 16th. You know you've got to be ready on January 16th. You know, it's no good being ready January 17th. You've got to be ready on the 16th. You need something that's going to motivate you forward, but you need a goal. The next thing I need, I need a, I need a purpose. This, these are the fundamental steps of the Harada method. I need a goal. I need a purpose. I'm going to analyze myself. Where am I? Got to know where I am in order to know where I'm going. I'm going to analyze myself. And then I'm going to put action steps. I have to put action steps. How am I get there? So we then decide a purpose. This is very powerful, by the way. Establishing a purpose. Harada did this in a quadrant. Four segments in a quadrant. The top two is tangible. The bottom two is intangible. What am I going to do? What's my purpose, tangible purpose, for attaining my goal? Well, in a tangible way, then I divide it this way, left and right, for me and for everybody else. For me, for my family, for society, etc. It's a quadrant of four to be successful. So we look in four quadrants. Now, the secret here is to write down as many as you can, as many purposes as you can, and as deep as you can, as important as you can. Because you want to get yourself so excited, so passionate. Then the next segment is self-analysis. But these are the goals. We decide our goal, and it's important. We show it by numbers. Where's our goal? Where are we going? We're going to set these goals. And what does winning mean to you? Decide the due dates. When am I going to do it? When am I? Importance of setting exact dates to attain your goal. And then you have to learn how to dream. You have to learn how to dream. This is an important part of the Rada method, is you have to learn how to dream. You have to dream what you're capable of being. You have to believe in it. You have to dream. You have to see yourself up on the podium. You have to see yourself as a winner, if you're going to be a winner. You know, you start off the process.